a modal is a popular navigation pattern, and it's when a screen is displayed modally over your other app content. In this video, we look at three different ways of displaying content over the rest of your app. An alert, a React Native modal, and using Explore Router to display a screen modally. Before opting straight to displaying a screen modally with a router, consider what you're using the modal for. For a quick confirmation prompt, you might want to use an alert. Or you need a custom styled component, then you might want to use the React Native modal. Both of these can easily be triggered from any screen in your app. I'll be building on top of the full tab layout we concluded with at the end of the previous video. For a quick confirmation prompt, you may want to use the native alert component. Let's add a button here on the index page that will open a simple alert. For this, we use the alert component from React Native and call alert alert with our custom message. While you can't give it custom styles, it can receive any number of options, which are handy for a quick confirmation. For example, you can mark a button as destructive, which will give it a destructive style. And when pressed, it will trigger the on press function. The alert is platform specific, so it will look a little bit different on Android. React Native also ships with a fully customizable modal component. Let's start by creating a use state value, which stores whether the modal is visible or not. Then let's import modal from React Native and define it at the bottom of the screen. We want to set the visible prop to use our use state variable and set the on request close callback to close the modal. This will be used if the user closes the modal using the Android back button or gestures. Let's define an outer and an inner view. So the outer view will just center the content and we'll add some padding and a background to the inner view. We'll show some text in the modal and also a button to close it. Finally, we'll add a button to the home screen to open the modal. So by default, we get this full screen modal with a fade animation. We can configure the animation type, for example, setting it to slide, we'll have the screen slide from the bottom. And by setting transparent to true, we can keep the rest of the app in the background visible. There's also other presentation styles. For example, with page sheet, we get this very iOS native animation. And we can pull down to close it. And of course, the same modal component works on Android. Showing an actual screen modally makes sense if you need it to be an actual route in your app. It needs to have an asset navigator or you want to deep link to it. Right now, our navigation looks like this. We have four bottom tabs. Two of them have nested stack navigators and two are just single screens. We need the modal to exist within the same navigator as the bottom tabs. So we group the tabs with a grouping folder and add a new root layout file. This layout file will return a stack navigator, which will govern both the bottom tabs and the modal. Let's create a folder called tabs in the app folder and add all the other screens and layout files in there. We'll also need to create a new layout file in the app folder. This is going to be our new root layout file. It will have a default export and will return a stack navigator. Let me also move this tailwind import from the tabs layout to the new root layout and also the status bar component. Now the layout file for the tabs can actually just return the tabs. Now at this point, let's restart the bundler and reload the app. 
Now we have our bottom tabs rendered as before, but we do have this duplicate header issue. So let's list the tabs in the stack and set header shown to false. Now our duplicate header issue is gone and our tabs are rendering as before. Now for the modal, let's create a new file in the app directory called modal. And I'll just copy the fourth screen and default export a modal screen with a view and some text. And going back to the home screen, we can add a button that opens the modal. This will be just a link that navigates to the modal, just like we would navigate to any other screen. Now, when I navigate to this, it currently opens like any other screen on a stack, but I want it to be a nice modal animation. So let's define the modal screen in our root layout. And under screen options, let's set presentation to be modal. And now when we navigate to the screen, we get this lovely native modal animation with the swipe to close gesture. This will look slightly different on Android, of course, due to using platform appropriate UI. We can always add additional stack navigators within the modals. By now, you probably have a pretty good idea how to do it. Let's create a new folder in the app folder called modal with stack with an index file. And this will have an index file that will just return a view and some text. We'll also add another screen called nested and a layout file, which returns a default export with a stack navigator. And in the root layout file, ensure that we present this new modal stack as modal. We'll also add a button to the modal with stack index screen to open this nested screen. And finally, we'll add a link to open this modal from the home page. Let's refresh the app. And we're in a modal with a navigator. We probably don't want to show two headers here, so we can hide the additional header in the root layout. Let me show you what happens when we try to deep link into our modal. So I will deep link into my app into the modal screen. Now the problem is that even though it opens this modal screen like I wanted, it's not rendering the tabs in the background, so I can't do anything else in here. Our root layout is a stack, so it has tabs and two modals. Because our app's main entry point is within the tabs, this element of the stack normally always gets rendered first. So this issue is caused by deep linking into your app and opening a different screen of the stack first. So really what we want to do is to configure it so that if this modal is open first, ensure that the tabs is still rendered as the initial route. And the way we do this is in the root layout file, so where the stack is defined, we export a constant called unstable settings. Don't worry about the unstable here. This is perfectly fine to use in production. It is only marked as unstable because it does not work with async routes, which we are not using. And here, let's set initial route name to tabs. So this will mean that if any other screen other than tabs gets opened first, then this stack navigator will actually render the tabs first and then whatever else you were navigating to on top. The name initial route is a little bit unfortunate here, but it is going to get renamed to anchor in future router versions. And now when I open a deep link, it opens the modal, but we can see that it also rendered the tabs in the background. So we can close the modal and go on exploring the rest of the app. In this video, we looked at different ways of displaying content over the rest of your app. Alerts, handy for quick confirmation prompts. React Native Modal, a fully customizable modal component. And displaying an actual route in your app modally. See you next time.